Well, we want to welcome all of you to a noon conversation, and uh, we're glad to have you online. We haven't had a noon one for a while, so it's nice to see you know, some new faces and some people we haven't seen before or for a while. So let's start with a word of prayer. Father, I just want to thank you and praise you for this gathering. I pray, Father, that as we just are in fellowship with one another, that we would see more of you and be able to encourage one another in the ministries that we, you have placed us in. So I pray, Father, that you would be with Dave today as he leads us and that we would um, connect with one another in a deep level and whoever watches it later, that they would be blessed by the conversation. Thank you, Father, in advance for who you are, for your love of us, for your generous giving of your only son that connects us all through his blood. In Jesus' name, amen. Dave. Oh, yeah, I'm in charge. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, discovered that three minutes ago, and I didn't even know I was going to be on this until three minutes ago. So, uh, <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out what in the world I'm doing. No, I've been working on uh, the Ed Council is getting together for a retreat next uh, Monday, Tuesday. So working on some reports for that. And that's that was this morning. And that's what I was focusing on. Then I saw an email, no, a text I got. I'm like, oh, okay. So I'll chime in on this then today. And so, so it's good to see you all. And so I just ask that you be in prayer for the Ed Council Retreat. that will be happening next Sunday night, Monday and Tuesday. And so I'm just getting together some information about our pastors and our churches and their involvement. And I'm looking at their age groups and education and whether they're full-time, part-time. I'll just share a little bit of that. Uh, one thing I found interesting was that, yeah, we have 59 full-time pastors and 43 part-time pastors and 17 retired pastors. So our, the retired ones are part-time, so we're split 59-60, 59 full-time, 60, 59 full 60 part-time uh, pastors. So I, I didn't realize we were at that level. I thought we still had more full-time than part-time pastors. And so that's just a change that's going on. And then I also looked at how many are were born and raised Church of Godders as opposed to uh, not Church of God. And we have 69 born and raised Church of Godders and 51 not. And that's just looking at uh, solo senior pastors. And so that's just some of the stuff I'm trying to figure out. How does that play into all of who we are and where we're going? And so, so just be in prayer for us over that. I'll also share a, a personal note that Donna's mom has agreed to go into a nursing home. And so they're working on that. And that'll probably, uh, that was supposed to take place Labor Day weekend. Now it's going to take place next week. Uh, things got moved up a little bit. So she'll be heading out there. And so as we just try to figure all that out and help them. So <clears throat> and then also, but I'll be working on Bible quizzing next week, going out to the General Conference uh, National Finals, uh, and that's going to be at the West Penn camp. So I'll be having fun asking a bunch of teenagers questions on Matthew. So that's some things happening in my life and as we're going. And so let's just go around. I'll, I'll just call out and I'll go around as I see you. Pat, I guess you're next. Let's hear about the gumbo. Uh, we're doing God's chuck wagon today, but we're doing it a little bit differently. We're going to be setting up tables at a couple of the homeless camps serving Gumbo, conversation, and Bibles, and uh, we got a couple of nurses coming in to do some health checkups for them. Okay. That's uh, the Dave, I'm a little bit annoyed about your figures. I don't hear hillbilly pastors in there anywhere. The, hear what? Hillbilly pastors in there anywhere. Hillbilly. Uh, <laughs> um, that'd be my favorite group. Uh, y Table's on the go. Uh, Me with Kyle Wednesday. We're going to be the primary church over there. We've already got a small congregation ready to go in there. Saturday, we're going over to set it up. The first Saturday of August, we're launching. Uh, the second Saturday of August, we're going to have Bikers for Christ there. Um, the organizations worldwide. That, uh, a friend of mine runs a chapter up in Paxnos, I think, um, Poconos, and he's going to bring his group down, and we're going to do a big uh, thing there on Saturday, second Saturday of August. We're going to do a pig roast and everything. So... We're looking forward to seeing what that does. So, but yeah, you know, I got an interesting note, folks, and I want to know if anybody thinks it's kind of or is it just me? The lady I've been dealing with in the town, and I finally remember who she was, left me a note Saturday. I had all the men here. We got the baptismal up and moving. And it says, Pastor Pat, I miss talking to you, even though Jesus is your way of life. 
but you're still my friend and inspiration. And then she goes to use the Bible to support her lifestyle of Wiccan, witchcraft, and uh, voodoo. And I have no idea how to respond to it. What? <laughs> I would just go with the friendship. Yeah. I wouldn't get into the religious stuff. I mean, she's saying she values you as a person. Yeah. Just keep just keep that going for a bit. And and if she ever wants to talk about the other, let her bring it up. But otherwise, I, I don't think you have to do that. I mean, she knows about you, she knows about Jesus. So let her see Jesus in you. And yeah. I think I mean that's what I would do at that point at this point. I, I, I mean, just, I was just amazed. She knows the Bible, but she knows it enough to twist it to support her views and her, her religious quote unquote beliefs. Uh, yeah. But I often actually, what I've asked people sometimes when they say, that, if they say they don't believe the Bible, now she's quoting it, but sometimes what I, when, when I'm talking to somebody, if they say they, you know, they don't believe that stuff in the Bible. I ask one. I ask one question to start with, and that is, have you read the Bible as an adult? Hmm. Because a lot of times people haven't. The stories that they have in their mind are from childhood, plus what they've heard. So right. if they're if they're talking about the Bible, I just say, have you read, for instance, have you read, read one of the Gospels as an adult? Okay. And they may say yes, and if they have, then you know, tell me. Let's you know, let's talk about that. But yeah. but uh, I just. I just think there's a lot of people who they heard stuff. They were in church or they heard stuff, but the stuff they heard didn't matter because they didn't like the examples of the people. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, and that's why in some cases they left. And I know that's an excuse. I understand that because we all need Jesus regardless of what people we run into, <laughs> but still it's reality. I just think, you know, have you, have you ever read the Bible as an adult or and specifically, have you read, have you read one of the gospels about Jesus? Have you read one of the gospels as an adult? Cause that can start a conversation there, but mostly I think just be, be you. She obviously likes you. Give yeah, I just think it was funny how she words it, even though Jesus is your way of life. I'd like to be your friend still, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, what do I do with this? <laughs> well, you can, you can say the same thing in return, really. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Even though this other is your, is your way of life. I still like you and want to be your friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she threw some words I've never even heard of, and I had to go Google up like Sostrianology and oh. uh, numerology and all my ology. I'm just like, holy <laughs> smoke. But it's just, it was just really weird, and I didn't know how to approach it. I like your approach, and I'm going to use that. You know, I'm going to stay her friend. <laughs> Witness to her without witnessing to her is what you're basically saying. So, be interesting. And look for the opportunities for the Spirit to give you opportunity just to minister to her and to care for her and to speak, continue to speak truth without beating her. So it's yeah. an opportunity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. It was, just, it was just really weird. It was like weird and humbling at the same time. So yeah. I didn't know how to approach it. That's why I brought it to here to ask. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Barb, what's happening in your life these days? <laughs> Can't find the mouse to get my... <laughs> <laughs> um, just, you know, living the dream. Uh, we're, you know, we're, we're preparing for whatever God has next for us. So I'm looking forward to, we have a children's day coming up. Now mm -hmm. we only have three kids, but I'm told this is going to be awesome. So, you know... And I shouldn't say only. We've got three kids. Most churches are sides, though. <laughs> yeah. So um, we've got that going on. We are in the process of collecting. We'll be collecting food for our next um, Love Your Neighbor section. So um, that's really <laughs> so funny. I was out to dinner with Megan because Megan and I have been discussing her future as a teacher. Very excited about that. And I always leave my business card with a little note saying, thank you for serving us. And the waitress came back to the table with the card in her hand and said, exactly where is this church? And so I told her, well, it turns out she lives in the apartments and has been receiving 
the food that we take there. And um, she, she told me, you know, I'll be in church on Sunday. I've actually been looking. I've been to a couple of different ones. I'll be in your church on Sunday. Of course, she didn't come. And I explained to Megan after she, as we were leaving that she may come. She probably won't. But, you know, a lot of people are going to come to your church someday. So they ever show up, we'll have a crowd. Um, <laughs> but the fact that we had, she acknowledged the fact that she knew who we were because we had touched her life. And I, you know, so that gave me an opportunity to say, okay, Megan, this is part of ministry. You don't always get what you think you're going to get out of it. But if you're touching someone's life for Jesus, you're doing what you're supposed to do. So she was very, you know, she was really um, tickled to have that whole conversation. Uh, so we know that we're at least touching lives. We don't know how. And we let that up to God. That's kind of his job. We'll let him do it. <laughs> so, you know, we're just out there loving on them as best we can. So that's that's going on. Search committee, of course, is still functioning. And of course, we're praying very intently for them. Um, you know, we're going to see what God does. Yeah. I'm, you know, praying for my future, whatever that might be. And because I'm, I keep telling people I'm not dying. I'm just leading the pulpit. <laughs> so, there's ministry everywhere. You want to do it. So, mm -hmm. You know, but that's about it. I'm, I'm excited. I mean, we're, we're doing what we can do for the size congregation we are. That's the call to be obedient. Yeah. Do what God puts in front of us to see the peep, the person in front of us. Even if it's Zacchaeus hiding up a tree, Jesus still saw him and ministered to that man on that day. And it changed his life. So thanks for caring for the lady in front of you. And even some other ways that you didn't know you were caring for her. Yeah. Knows what well, now we know specifically who to pray for because I got her name. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good. Good. So Dean, Bob, let you're there. How's life treating you these days? Yeah, finally, it takes I finally I'll work on that. All right. Fine and dandy. Uh, Wind and rain. <laughs> uh, supposed to be out on the beach. I don't know what's happening today. Uh, <clears throat> question, uh, Dave. The uh, did they hire someone yet for the uh, uh, position concerning discipleship? No, we haven't hired anyone yet. We're uh, okay. in the process of doing that. So that's still probably sixty days out. Oh my. Okay, I. I forgotten the, and had erased that email and I didn't know what all it was and how soon it was going to be or anything. So I was just interested how that was going. Uh, we're doing fine. Uh, we have actually less people here now than we had during that latter part of the uh, real bad COVID deal. Uh, the <laughs> folks, are, folks are leaving. Church is sed settling back in. Uh, I think we had 19 new people in the last two weeks. So that's Right. out and talking to folks and some of them of course are just friends of people that live in the area and some of them will even just be vacationers and uh, we got them to come to church but uh, it's, it's fun to see it's fun to see the people coming in yeah uh, that's that's what we do so, all right uh, hey thank you much we're having fun uh, good dean thanks for sharing so uh Glenn Osborne, you're next on my list that I see there. And so I'm not sure if this is your first time here or I think it might be. Yeah. It might be. Well, welcome to the group because I haven't been here for a while. So I wasn't sure if you'd been here the last couple of weeks or not. But just, you know, we go around the horn and let people give updates if they want to. If if they're showing their face, we let them give updates. <laughs> if they don't show their face, we, we assume they may be doing something else and we don't. Don't force anyone to share, but it's good to see you and welcome. Uh, and so, thanks. Hi, hi, Dean. It's good to see you too, brother. Yeah, been a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know if you knew. I uh, since last April, I am uh, serving a um, non-denominational church yep. um, over here in Carlisle uh, Community Christian Fellowship. 
uh, I had been helping fill the pulpit. They were without a pastor for a couple of years. They had a, well, they had a problem where a pastor had a moral failure and they had to let him go. And then they, uh, they said, well, why don't you be our pastor? I said, no, I'm too old. You need somebody younger. And, yeah. and uh, so uh, we went through that for a while. Then they, they found a guy that they thought was going to be their pastor. And about two weeks before he was to come, he called and said he wasn't coming. Hmm. So then they asked me again. I said, no, no, I was still working with COM back then. And uh, so anyway, uh, December of 2019, I, Finally agreed to put my hat in the uh, in the situation, and uh, so we we've been served. I, I left COM in in April or March of 2020, and started up here April of 2020, right in the midst of the COVID COVID yeah situation, uh, doing things online that hadn't done before, all that stuff. But we're we're doing good. It's a it's a it's a healthy church. Uh, we've got about 200 people on a Sunday, and um, it's about where we were before COVID. But um, yeah, I'm here on a five year uh, plan. Okay. <laughs> if the Lord gives me health. Although last weekend I was in the hospital, so you know uh, they're not sure I'm going to last. But no, I had had some issues with. Uh, um, well, gallbladder, apparently, didn't know what it was, but also uh, as a result of the antibiotics, I had uh, what they call C. diff. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yeah. Well, the, bad, uh, the bad bacteria killed the good bacteria, so now we're trying to get things back in order. But, um, but I'm doing good, better today than I was a week ago, and uh, <coughs> nice, nice to see some of you I haven't seen for a while. Just thought I'd check in, see what's going on. Yeah. Well, thanks for doing so. It's good to see you. And I, I heard a little bit about that hospital stuff, so it was really good. Oh, okay. <laughs> out and about today, so I was. Yeah, yeah. I got out last Monday, and okay. uh, I have an appointment this a week from Thursday with the surgeon for the gallbladder. So. Okay. We're, we're in process. It's uh, nothing uh, apparently life threatening, but uh, just a little disturbance, you know. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll be in prayer for you about that. So appreciate it. Thanks for sharing today. Dale Stoops. Good to see you on this. I'm not sure if this is your first time or not. So it's been a while. It's been a while. Okay. <laughs> a little while. Yeah. Life so, is good. What's happening God in Brisbane good. these days? God is good. He's doing good, good things. Uh, we talked your week. We had a great praise service. Uh gentleman. Remission from cancer and uh, just a powerful testimony he gave. Um, we're looking forward to possibly a fall revival coming up in a couple months, which if it's anything like the spring revival, it's going to be good. Matt Scott and I um, have joined together and, uh, you know, it's nice to have Matt close by. Matt is, doesn't do a whole lot, but he does have a uh, love for God and uh, is there to help me along my journey here as well. Um, but yeah, life is good. I mean, we're slowly getting people back. Um, I wish they would come back a little quicker, but you know, um, we just keep praying that uh, God keeps working, keeps moving. Um, uh, starting to worry about a pianist. Our pianist and will be going off to college in a few weeks. Mm. So uh, everybody's kind of stressing about that. But I just figure uh, God will su supply a pianist. Or he'll make a way that will sound good a cappella. It's as simple as that, right? So, yep, that's how we used to do it. Before. That's right. And as an organ thing, they just they had a good guy or a lady up there standing, started us going. We all sang, joined in. So, yeah, I've, I've heard some some good acapella, and I've heard some not so Pretty good. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> so, other than that, life is good. God is good. 
what more you need. <clears throat> well, thanks for joining us today and for sharing. So, yep, no problem. Don Snyder, how are you this fine day? Recuperating. Recuperating. Yep. Yep. PBS. We had a PBS last week. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, it was it was a good week. Uh, um, I, I can't say that there was anything bad. It was kind of weird. We had uh, three churches of God in the Big Spring School District area, South Fairview, Newville, and, and our church here at Dublin Gap, that all were doing VBS the same week. Uh, two of us were actually doing the same VBS program, the Rocky Railway, um, and then Newville picked uh, Group's 2021 version. But uh, we, we, still had, uh, we still had a good number of kids. What was encouraging to us, um, well over half, uh, if not close to two-thirds of the kids were not from our church. Hmm. They were either, uh, you know, connected with friends or they were neighbors or, you know, some kind of extension there, maybe some some family members. But um, so we want to try to follow up on that. You know, if they're not connected with a church, we want to try and connect them with one. Um, so it was but it, it, it was also a reminder that, uh, uh, you know, the most critical part of any VBS program is the prayer cover surrounding it. Uh, because there were opportunities pretty much leading up to and actually all during the week uh, for things to uh, to kind of just go um, just with some personality, uh, styles of doing things. Uh, we had some new faces and um, but God answered the prayers of a of a focused prayer covering and uh, kids had no clue. Uh, everything went well. They enjoyed the, the the messages and the uh, the excitement that was there. So, um, as Brother Dale said, God is good all the time, and all the mm -hmm. time, God is good. So, that's our update. All right, thanks for sharing. I saw the VBS sign as I was heading up to camp on Saturday. So, yeah, yeehaw. Trevor Reese, good seeing you, brother. <clears throat> Good seeing you, Dave, and everyone else. How's ministry going for you? Well, I just got back from vacation, so vacation was fine. Um, other than that, the church seems to be standing. So uh, okay. we had a, well, we're having, we need a new soundboard. Our soundboard basically uh, died yesterday. So we're praying for that. But other than that, we're doing all right. Okay. Well, I'm glad you had a good vacation. And you can fill up that room anyway, whether you have a microphone or not. So just. Are you saying I'm loud, Dave? You can be. <laughs> you can project. Agree, <laughs> Frank, how about you? Uh, working hard, Dave, working hard. I know you're in the day, so then you yeah. laugh. Yeah, it's uh, we're in the process of transitioning, as most of you know, with Colleen now, uh, uh, who has abandoned the finances of the conference and left me as an orphan. And uh, uh, but hey, she got a better offer. What can I say? Uh, but uh, now. Uh, it's, it's interesting, some changes happening, and uh, I'm excited about it because I think Colleen now is, uh, that's the trouble with Colleen is she's so talented in so many areas that it's hard to pinpoint one area, but uh, uh, I think she's in her sweet spot and where she uh, wants to be and certainly where she can impact uh, lots of people. And so... Uh, I'm just glad that I'm able to pick up some of uh, what she did. Uh, certainly not able to do it as well as she did it, but I'll do my best. And uh, uh, I think it is a matter of prayer as we transition with a, a new staff person coming on board and uh, some other changes that are taking place at the conference that uh, we do cover your prayers uh, uh, because certainly uh, – uh, I'm a true believer of spiritual warfare, and our pastor at Charmantstown is beginning a series of, of messages on uh, spiritual warfare. And uh, 
you know, Satan is certainly uh, able and capable of, of causing havoc uh, in many different ways. But I think anytime we go through change, uh, it provides him an opportunity to create some uh, issues. And, uh, uh, but I'm convinced that he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. So uh, what maybe he is going to try to use as a, a destruction will be used by God to uh, bring glory to his name. So that's my prayer. All right. Thank you. Yes. There is a battle going on that we don't even fully know about. But we have one who is stronger. So. Mm. Rich, what can you share from the South? Hi, yeah. Um, yeah, Dean, I feel your pain. It's just, you know, it's cloudier here today and stuff. You know, it's, it's you know, it rains. I got sprinkled on some when I was out walking and stuff. So I got to walk again today instead of getting it all in in the morning. But, but anyway... Um, yeah, so I'm in, I'm in, I live in Fort Mill, South Carolina, just across the border into the, about, I'm about 20 minutes from Charlotte, just across the border into South Carolina, about two miles, an hour up from Columbia, South Carolina, uh, about four hours from Atlanta, um, a couple hours from where Victor Glover is up around uh, Raleigh and Burlington and that kind of area up there. And so I'm working with the churches we have at uh, trying to do what we're, we're trying to do everywhere, which is trying to uh, discover, develop, deploy disciple makers as Jesus commanded. So I'm working with the churches in this area. And also uh, along with that, then organizing out of that, uh, continuing to organize a, a Southeast region for the Church of the God, um, looking at uh, the general conference sessions next July as a time for that to be approved and to just kind of moving towards towards that that. Uh, that de not deadline because it doesn't have to be then, but uh, I, th I think it's I think it's happening. Meeting with the pastors a monthly um, and getting out to see them and all, so it's pretty neat. And a lot of people are doing some good. They've been doing some good things through these times. They've been feeding people in the community a lot. Um, wow. Just went to Saturday morning. Went to a community gathering in uh, for Randall Randall Hall Walker and his wife Berdella. How this. Um, have a neighborhood community center as well as a church in the the meeting at where they're at. They when you, they were right in Charlotte, kind of. Now they've moved to Pineville, which is just south on the south side. It's still really Charlotte. And Saturday there were must, there were thirty to forty different community leaders there because um, because they they invited them to come out and just it was interesting to hear people all these people. It, it was like everybody there pretty much had a ministry that they were talking about feeding the homeless. Another group, somebody else was having a, they're having a fair this, I thought this was pretty cool. Somebody was having a fair, which you might think of as a block party, but part of it was besides all the fun things and food and all this kind of stuff, they were, they were able to vaccinate people for COVID-19. That was part uh -huh. of what they were doing. Uh, because they said in, in certain, the, certain areas of Charlotte, their the vaccination rate is that they're, they're especially working on it. It's as low as 20% in some places, 20 mm -hmm. to 30%. So they're going in, that ministry is going in there and uh, uh, and and having having vaccinations on that day, and other churches that are that are they're just other ministries that are doing things. So it was neat to to connect with them, um, talk to different ones of them afterwards. Some of them uh, who want to connect with with us as Church of the Gods, and uh, just just doing different things. Victor Glover, of course, is Victor Glover. He is everywhere. Uh, <laughs> he's got he's got. Uh, uh, a father's going to move and coming out with that, a micro church in Jacksonville, Florida. He's working with people in the way he works with people in Pennsylvania as well, like in York with Trace Udermall and, and the people there. He's got somebody he, he's got he's working with somebody in Finley, Ohio, and that's the Great Lakes region. So he works. Mm -hmm. They're working the Great Lakes, but he knew he's got somebody in Missouri, which is a Western conference. Uh, so he's got he's, he's talking. There was a pastor who died a few weeks ago in who lived in Texas had a church in, in Texas. It was part of the Western. I can't think of the man's name, but it was, but uh, Victor had talked to him a few times. So he's Victor's in contact with that person, but they died of, they had complications with COVID-19. So um, wow. Victor's doing lots. Of, he's, he's been training a lot of people online. So instead of running all over the place, uh, which he did, which a bunch of us did, um, 
he really pivoted well and started doing things online and has accomplished more online than he would have had he been running all over. Not that he doesn't want to see people or gather yeah. them, but he's, he's consistently doing things online. Uh, Antoine Lasseter as well is, is doing a lot of things, has, a, has a, some uh, residence, residency program, uh, some people who are going to go out and plant churches, some other people that are going to use their giftedness within the, the church there, but, but, but be uh, brought up more, so to speak, in their calling and uh, other people uh, that, that same way making connections. So um, my big thing is, and I discovered this, if you haven't taken the unique thing yet, but it's pretty neat. I did the unique thing. I was, this, the ERC staff was doing it. And, and as that was going on, I moved here. I was moving here about a year and a half ago. So I didn't get to finish up. So I started then if, after getting, being here a few months, I, I, Diane and I did it online together or on the phone, actually talk with each other. And I finished it up and uh, I found my two words and my, my, my calling statement and stuff. And I realized that when you, what you find out is, isn't like that you became something now. It's just that you look back and you see what you already are. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, and I'm a connector. That's, that's, that's who I am. Um, so I just love it when I, when I have like a, a new pastor came to me and I said, do you know this guy? So I have him connected he wants to connect with the ERC, with the Southeast, and I can, and, but he already knew uh, Antoine some. So Antoine's talking to him because Antoine can, can mentor him and have a place for him to, to minister out of. And, and so we're trying to do those kind of things. Uh, so, it's, so it's pretty fun. Um, but of course, not every day's fun. You know, sometimes, sometimes you let yourself down. Sometimes other people let you down. Let's just be honest. It's just... Mm. When other people let us down, sometimes I remind myself I let myself down too. Sometimes when people aren't where they where they need to be, I remind myself I haven't always been where I need to be. And even today, I'm not where I want to be. You know, so if, if I remind myself of that, I'm okay. If I don't, yeah. then I can get frustrated. So, you know, we deal with all these kinds of things. So, you know, we all talk. Generally, we talk about the good things that are happening, and that's and that's that's okay because you just need to talk one on one with somebody about some other things, but. You know, I'm here to say there's some things that, that aren't always so good, yep. but, but because God is good, you can take it to him and you can take it to another person to help you. And uh, it makes all the difference. So I'm glad to be able to be on today. So thanks for yeah. being here. Well, thanks for sharing and <clears throat> various things going on there. And yeah, there's a whole lot of things going on with that. That was a good word there that, yeah, we're not always where we want to be and other people aren't there, but we're as long, let's be on that journey being more like Christ and encouraging each other to be on that and to be a true follower of Jesus. And so, yeah. And sometimes a group setting like that's not the best place to share all that, but we need places that we can do that. Right. So thanks Rich. Yeah. So Colleen, what do you want to share as a, well, as Frank said, you know, we're in the middle of <clears throat> transition and change in the office and, you know, for through Unique, I discovered that really I'm not a real um, called to be a spreadsheet person. And um, it was, re I faked it for a lot of years. <laughs> so as it turns out that, um, you know, my two words are noticing brokenness. And uh, when this role came up for being a, really it's like a caregiver for the pastors and their families um, that um, I had to admit that, God wants me to do it, even though he's going to have to make it all happen for sure. As things come off my plate and I start to minister to the pastors and the families, um, I'm starting to do that and can see the great need, um, you know, for them to just feel heard, really heard, um, won't be able to fix all the issues that they have, but certainly can point them to resources or the right people who might be able to help them. So you know, I'm excited and scared all at the same time about that, um, but it's going to have to be God, you know, making it all come together and, you know, being able to serve in a way that honors him. And, you know, I think over the years I've learned that, you know, because of I, I know all the things that I've been forgiven of, there's this thing called mercy that uh, when you realize all that you've been forgiven of and how much God has rescued you, that you should be generously merciful to others who do, who do disappoint, who, you know, aren't, you know, you know, further along in their journey or, or whatever it is. So I'm excited about that. And um, I was able to 
speak at a church over the weekend and I'm going to be at Swadara this weekend and um, and then up at Mount Briar in, in um, up at down at down. Down. <laughs> <laughs> south. <laughs> okay. Mount Briar in uh, in August. So I'm looking forward to that. So just please continue to pray for the staff as we um, make pivot, really make some adjustments in roles and duties and um, positions. And it's stressful. I noticed that my eyes twitching lately, that I know that I'm under a lot of stress personally as well. And this is where what Satan tries to do to distract us. And, um, you know, I know it and recognize it. So I asked for prayer for my mom. She's still in the hospital. Um, and hoping to be able to bring her home soon, but you know, she's not doing very well. So yeah, it's tough, but God's still good. All right. Hey, can I jump in a minute quick? Sure. I, I was said about connecting, but then as you were saying your two words, Colleen, remind me, my, my two words actually are reflecting hope, but I, I'm, ref, but then the longer statement is by connect, I, connecting people together, but reflecting hope and, uh, I've always found hope to be so important to me and reflecting it because I don't have any, it, it's like, for, for me, it's like, it's when I look at the moon, you think of the moon shining, but the moon doesn't, the moon only reflects the light of the sun. And uh, that's what I want to do. I want to reflect the light of the sun. All right. Morning, Colleen, because you're perfect for this because you <clears throat> wear your heart on the sleeve. Um, you're like me, I can't sit in an office. I can't do spreadsheets. I can't even run a computer. Uh, I got to be out in the field. I got to be out with people. I, I got to be out with brokenness. Um, and I think God's going to use you for something awesome. I mean, like awesome sauce, extreme and, and humbling watching. I have never. This place has been a privilege to serve for. I was just telling Don this. Coming from Assemblies of God to here has been such a radical change. There's such a genuineness here, a genuineness meaning that there's a genuine need, there's a genuine care, there's a genuine compassion. It's not just people for people, it's people for ministry, and I really love it. Thanks, Pat. Can I just join in with Pat and say, I had the same experience coming from the Assemblies of God. The genuineness in the churches of God is, uh, it just draws you in. <laughs> what else to say? It just draws you in. <laughs> Thank you. I needed to hear that today. So. I'll just leave it at that. All right. Uh, I think we're around to everyone who's 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 visible and so grateful for the other ones who are listening in. Uh, I'll, on Saturday, I was up at Camp Board, and so I just want to share a few things from uh, Camp Uligua. They're almost halfway through the summer. Uh, they expected that the number of kids, you know, last year anticipated a whole lot more than we had last year. But we're looking at you know 2019 that count, which was one of the higher counts, and we're running at 95 percent of the number of campers compared to the year before. And the biggest drop off, what got the percent down, was Camp Hope, uh, which was those with special needs. And it's understandable they were at 50 percent, and so that means the other youth camps are doing quite well. And so we just celebrate the things that are happening there. There are sixth graders up there now. As the camp board was over, I was walking out and this one mom and, and uh, daughter was coming down and said, where is everybody? And I said, for what? Well, for registration for camp. I'm like, um, that's tomorrow, not today. And so her kid was all excited about coming to camp on Saturday and I had her break her heart and say, no, you gotta wait 24 more hours. But you know, they're getting ready to be there. And so that's just exciting and all the different stories that we're hearing uh, from Camp Uligua this summer. So I want to throw that out there as well. <clears throat> so with that, unless there's someone else who wants to chime in here, I'll just wrap this up uh, with prayer. And thank you for being here. And, and I, oh, even before I go to prayer, I'll just, <clears throat> Ephesians 4, 
you know, the beginning part of that, that there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and in all and in you all and through all and in all. Uh, mess that up. Man, it's been a while since I had to quote that. But just the idea of being one together in Christ, and, and that's some of what Pat and Barb were sharing there. And so it's just great that we can be one, even in various parts of this state and various states. And so thanks for doing that. And let's serve Jesus together. And let me pray for us all. <clears throat> Father God, we're grateful that you are one, that you call us together and that you empower us in this. Uh, and I pray for your continued well-being to be upon us. Lord, forgive us of when we fall short of you. Forgive us when we do not truly reflect your goodness and your grace. When we cause any disunity within the body, forgive us of that. Help us to see you and to work together with you. <clears throat> I do pray for, for Glenn and for his continued recovery and for the gallbladder surgery that we'll have to have for Dale and for the plans for the revival and how it's going now. For the VBS, uh, the various churches have had, will had. Lord, may you continue to work with the leaders there and bring in the youth and the children that they may hear your good news, that they will want Jesus and be want to be able to reflect him and to live for him fully throughout their lives. I'm grateful, Lord, that Trevor was able to get away and be on vacation. So strengthen him now as he continues to serve for Colleen, for her mom, and give her strength for my mother-in-law. And as they make those uh, transition steps to help her get in the nursing home, Lord, you watch over and see all things. You know our hearts. You know our passions for you. Revive us this day that we may live for you today and always. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. I guess tomorrow night, Nick will be on, and that group will meet, and you're welcome to join then. And again, now next Monday, we won't be meeting, will we? We'll have the Ed Council. So, so we'll see you in a, several weeks then. Blessings to you all.